So now we go to a segment that is tagged Wisdom Clinic. And what we are deliberating on, which is going to be season one, is the issue of emotional awareness. We are in the season where you see people going on the streets and they are absence-minded. You will see people, the queen is coming, the person is not hearing. Not that the person put anything, but the mind is just far. So we want to see how we can strengthen ourselves emotionally. This emotional health is central to our overall health. So that's why we should not take it lightly. We should pay attention to the way we feel and how we respond to our feelings. Don't come and prove super being here that nothing gets to me. Even if anything happens, it's a lie. If something happens to you, you will see your real self. So what we want to see is that when things happen, or you are even going through a challenging time, how do you navigate successfully on hearts and you seek bounce back and become stronger? Emotional awareness is central to our overall health. Very important. And I want us to open our Bible to Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. We can have it on the screen so that we can read it together. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. The Bible says, Guide your heart with all diligence, for out of it are what? The issues of life. The issues of life. We have other versions that say, Guide your heart, because that is where life starts from. Anything that will happen, it starts from within. What you can conceive, you can achieve. Hello? What you can conceive, you can achieve. At times, on your inside, if you, if you are having low energy, you get to a place, you contaminate them with your low energy. And you see everybody around you getting low energy because of your words. Your words will portray what is on the inside. You just say, hey, life is bad. Though. You see, this, 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 this. before you know it, everybody will now be relate. Can you relate? Can you relate? But if you have come and you say, we are bouncing. God, we, you know, immediately they contact the energy too. <laughs> Psalm 147 verse 3, amplified version. Psalm 147 verse 3. The Bible says, he heals the broken hearted. Even if you are here, you are shattered from within. God will heal you in Jesus' name. And binds up their wounds, healing their pain, and comforting their sorrow. The Lord is willing to enter into the innermost part of your being. Please give him permission. Allow God to penetrate within. That thing you have been shielding from people, give him opportunity to penetrate, to penetrate. When he penetrates within, he's able to take care of anything that is troubling you. He's able to give answer to those questions that have been bothering you. Is able to give peace to that your troubled soul. Is able to give rest to the troubled soul. Please, the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Let me celebrate my husband, birthday boy. You know, he, he celebrated birthday on Monday. And we are going to do Thanksgiving today. If you are not celebrating my only bunny, I will not talk again. Thank you, and God bless you. Amen. So, the Lord is able to heal us within, and we should give him permission to penetrate. So, emotional awareness is about your emotional health and emotional well-being. It is your personal ability. Eh? It's a personal responsibility to recognize your feelings, Express them appropriately and undo varied experiences that you encounter in life. I come again. It is your personal responsibility and ability to recognize your feelings, express them appropriately, and undo varied experiences that you encounter in life. It is like a subset of emotional intelligence. 
Emotional intelligence is about you recognizing your feeling and recognizing the feeling of others. So that their own feeling, you don't allow it to come and corrupt your feeling. That is emotional intelligence. But this one is your own personal responsibility to recognize that I have feelings. And you should be able to name that feeling and trace the source per time. For instance, let me cite this uh, um, example. You realize that you are married and you observe that any small thing you want your wife to pet you, you'll be doing like a baby and crying. If you do not trace that I'm babyish and trace where it's coming from, okay, maybe you happen to be one spoiled baby from your house. When they were raising you, they spoiled you. You were the last born. So you were spoiled completely. So now, you now expect innocent person coming from the place where she happened to be the first born. And she's, she's even a choleric person who does not have emotion. Now coming to come and say, pamper me when something caught my hand. She'll be like, excuse me, take out the wool and clean it. You can relate. You will see that that person's emotional level is very, very unstable. There's something wrong. Most times, you... <laughs> Anani, I saw you. They, they were relating to something, something that I'm saying. Praise God. At times, you have to pity some people because what they are even going through started a long time ago. And they have carried it over and over and over. It is traceable to their childhood life, traceable to their parents, traceable to so many things that have happened in their journey. So now, they are at a stage, they now have accumulation of events in their, on their inside. They have different interpretations given to those events. Different interpretations. Okay. Somebody greeted you. I mean, you greeted somebody. And as you were coming, you have greeted the person. But you realize that the person didn't answer. You know, the interpretation can be that he did not see me. Or maybe something is running on the mind. Or maybe some, that person was busy. Or maybe the person could not even recognize that we know each other. You see the interpretation. And somebody can be saying, don't, 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 don't mind them. They are full of themselves. Proud people. You know, that's one interpretation. Another interpretation could be that, ah, I know it. Everybody in this world hates me. Nobody wants me. They don't want me around. You see different interpretations. So we want to get to a level where we begin to see events of life and interpret it well. That is where we are going. We can't finish today, but at least we'll go get to a level. The Lord will help us. Help me tell somebody, are you aware of your feelings? Do you understand how you feel by time? Do you manage your feelings well? Hope you don't transfer aggression to innocent people. The Lord will help you manage your emotions. In Jesus' name. This emotional awareness is important to the quality of our lives and our decisions. Very important to the, clo to the quality of our lives and the quality of our decisions. When you are emotionally down, you will make poor decisions. But when you are emotionally strong, you will make wise and informed decisions. Because you are on top of it. You are able to ask the right question. You are able to even, you yourself, you are truthful to yourself. You are objective to, on the matter that you are facing. You are not subjective. So it's important. It, when you have this emotional awareness ability, you are able to have the right state of mind. It will shape your perception about life and it will reflect in the way and manner you relate with anybody. You will, not, you will stop taking things personally. You will just be fair and be kind to yourself. Okay, today I will just share types of emotions. Then I will share some tips to master emotion in this economy. It is this economy that is warranting this teaching again. So that all of us can be in the right frame of mind and we can be when we are in the right frame of mind, it is easy for the Holy Spirit to even inspire you to be creative. 
to have ideas and to know what to do to cause cause and to make more money at this time. So we have types of emotions. We have primary and secondary emotions. We have positive emotions and we have negative emotions. Primary emotions, they are feelings after an event. The feelings that happen after an event, this event just happened now. The immediate feeling that follows, that is the primary emotion. We also have secondary emotions. Most times, many people are culprits of secondary emotion, especially negative one. How? Something has happened. You have moved on. When you now get back, you are on your own. You will now be dissecting, analyzing. You will now be saying, when I see the person tomorrow, I will, I will deal with the person. That is secondary emotion. I will let you know that I have mind of my own. I will, you will now begin to now gang up within yourself. You will call your bones, all your intense like to join a team. And do you know that that alone may not may, may take away sleep from you? Because you are actually preparing for battle tomorrow. You are preparing and sleep will go. You will not be able to, you will become restless. You will become useless to yourself, to the environment. You will just be boiling and boiling on the inside. That is most times many people are victims of this secondary negative emotion. So you have to be careful when things are, have happened and you now want to continue to now think, think, think about it. Let the Holy Spirit help you interpret well. It's because when you have negative analysis on the inside, it will cause paralysis on the outside. To paralyze your day, paralyze your thinking, your deliverables, your prayer life. You will wake up God, you want to worship God. The anger is still there, very hot. You will not be able to worship God. You will not be able to, to pray. So let us be careful. Negative emotions, they come when we are offended, when we, our expectations are not being met. You can be, you can be sad, you can be mad. That is, those are examples of negative emotions. Then we have positive emotions. You can be very glad when things happen. And you can create your joy even when they have not happened. You can create the joy of expectation that it will eventually happen. That is positive emotion for you. I want you to look at somebody beside you, be positive. No matter the situation. Please tell the person, say be positive. No matter the situation. Be positive. No matter the situation. Lastly, say I will be positive. No matter the situation. In Jesus name. Number one tip, uh, emotional awareness tip I want to share with us today, apart from the one we have shared, the first tip is that please, please carry your burden to God every day. Matthew eleven twenty eight, Carry your burden so that you will not be carrying the load that does not belong to you. You are disappointed. You, are, you, you plan to be early. But something, something happened. Boss that you took, you know, the, when you don't have a vehicle of your own, you cannot predict the bus driver. Anything can happen to their vehicle. It is when they are carrying you, you are in haste. They will now branch in the petrol station. And they will now queue for hours. And you that you are canting and you like that. You, why don't you buy fuel before now? You will, so please take the burden to God. When things are not working out the way you have planned them, Take the button in to God. Let's read in uh, Matthew eleven twenty eight. We need it. Please let me read to somebody beside you. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy lady, and I will give you rest. Tell the person it's God that is talking, or not me. Uh, so take your body to Him, lay it at His cross, and don't go home with it again. Don't go, and uh, you can put it into practice. At, practice at home. You are burdened. You are burdened, seriously burdened. You can, one of the things, the therapy I give to my people that I take emotional awareness, I will say, you can have a paper, write all the pains, all the hurts, and people attached to the hurts, and the situation, circumstances, some of us, some dates in our head, those memories are hurt. You have certain dates that, if you remember the date like this, something will spark. So, write all of them. When you are burdened, present it before God in your closet and go and burn it. If you don't have a place to burn, 
write on the tissue paper, put it in the toilet and flush it. It gives you a kind of level of comfort. You have allowed the thing to go. And don't say, I am writing it because I don't want to forgive you. You are writing because you want peace. You are actually committing to God's hand. Not that you are hiding the person or holding the person, you know, in the prison of your heart. So learn to carry your body. Everything. Not working. You have a bill to pay. You have everything. You have uh, something to pay. Something to attend to. Just carry the body. Jesus, you are the one who created me. I leave it at your feet. Give me peace and rest. Because of our time. Number two. Number two, I want to share with you. Please, draw strength from God daily. I beg of you. Draw daily strength from God. Please, can we have Psalm 84 verse 7? Psalm 84 verse 7 on the screen. Psalm 84 verse 7. Can we read it together? Everyone, please, let's look up. Say, I go from strength to strength. Tell your, your neighbor, somebody beside you, we go from strength to strength. Every one of us in Zion appeared before God. You draw strength when you wake up to worship your maker, you pray to him, and you ask him for strength to cope with the challenges of the day. The Bible says, day unto day utter a speech. You need strength to go through, to navigate each day. Ask God, I need strength as a wife, I need strength as a mother, I need strength on my job, I need strength to withstand anything that may come my way today. I will not break down. There are things you have to say to your inner man every day to prepare the inner man for the day. And the Lord will help you in Jesus' name. The last I will mention for this moment, please simplify your life. Simplify your life. It's very, very important. Some people, they are living complicated lives. And I would say a few things that will show to you that you are, you are living a complicated life. If you are in this meeting, you are always hunting for those you don't like on social media to know what is up with their life. You are, you are complicating your life. People you don't like, you will you now be hunting them to know what they post, what they are doing. You will have headache for tire. Because that person may even be doing it intentionally to spite you. Please, simplify your life. Why are you complicating your life? Or maybe you have an ex. The person you are parted a long time ago, you will now be stalking him. You will be stalking her. What is this? Say? Get, 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 get. Whoa. Craziness will come in. That's the truth. Small, small madness will begin. Because you will not be able to sleep. You will think that person is living a better life than you. You will think your life is grounded. Your life is stagnated. Your life is zero. You, the devil will make you feel that there's nothing good that is happening in your life. Please simplify your life. Very simple. Another way, way people complicate their life is through comparison, which is related to what we have said now. Comparison is a thief of joy. It will steal your joy. You will not enjoy the moments. You will not be able to progress. Any faithfulness of God in your life, enjoy it. You are not in competition with anybody. You are in competition with what God wants you to do. So what you achieved yesterday, today should be competing with it, not with anybody. You didn't do well yesterday. Today should compete to do well. Not that you will be comparing yourself with somebody, oh my mate, they have given birth to four children. They have given birth to six children. They are not living your life. You need to live your life. You have a life God has given you. That's why you must find that life and live it. Please, stop comparing and stop co competing with anybody. The, the, another thing in town now is that you are competing with somebody that does not even know you are competing with him. The person does not know that you are even doing any comparison. One time, we did, uh, um, God led us, so many years ago, we did uh, drama, family drama, two. How many of us have watched it before? Um, two nations and uh, three ways. We did it. We were not in competition with anybody. And I remember somebody came to me and said, even God told us too we should do drama. I said, go ahead now. We are not in competition. We are not even looking for recognition in drama, drama ministry. We are just doing the revelation God gave us to minister to families that as at that time, we realized that people watch more movies than listen to messages. And God said, do this 
package marriage teaching and parenting teaching and release it. So we're not in any way competing with you. And she said, by next year I will do. Till tomorrow they have not done. So what is it? What is it? We have some of you, when you see somebody do that, even me, I want to do it. I want, I want, to, I want to save money. I want to any year go on, but won't compete. The person is not even, does not care about you. You are the one giving yourself unnecessary pressure. Unnecessary pressure. I want to do this. I want to do that. If you are not in competition with somebody that God is blessing miraculously, whoa, you'll be pursuing, uh, you'll be doing rat race. You'll be pursuing wind like this. You will not meet the wind. That person is carrying one expensive bag. What do you want to become? You want to save to buy that what they do for? You know, you'll be, you'll just be disturbing yourself for life. You'll be having one thing or the other. One, the, whoa, please run away from personal madness. Please run away from personal madness that people are creating for themselves. Please. And the last one that people create, um, they complicate their lives is when they are always offended. My husband told us about different categories of people. He said we have people who look for offense. We have people who hunt for offense. We have people who create offense where offense does not exist. So if you are not in that category, where people love themselves in your church, but you, you always create offense. But once you see two people together, I guess it's, it's me there. And they are plain people, wonderful people, kind people. They are not even, they don't even know whether you are coming. <laughs> they don't even know whether you are, you are seen. They are just doing their thing. Some people, they will now, because they like offense and they are always suspicious. When you greet them too much, they will sense, ah, like this greeting, I think something. If you do not greet, another interpretation, there's a problem. Oh, may God deliver you in areas you have been complicating your life. Rise to your feet and say, no more pressure. <laughs> Rise to your feet and say, no more pressure. The Lord will help me. Lift up your hands and ask for the help of God. Daddy, I receive strength. Please talk to God in the area of your struggle. Tell him, maybe you struggle to forgive, you struggle to manage your day, you struggle in so many ways. Ask God, Lord, I ask that you help me in these areas of struggle. Daddy, help me. I don't want to struggle again. Emotionally, in the area of prayer, in so many things you are committed to my hands, please help me. Help me to think rightly. Help me to talk rightly. Help me to undo my emotion under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Help me. Holy Spirit, take charge of my hinama in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we are praying. Put your right hand on your chest and say, my hinama, receive fire. Receive fire. Receive purification. Receive sanctification. Receive, receive fire, my inner man, you will think rightly, you will think rightly I will talk rightly, I will think rightly, in the name of Jesus I have joy like a river in my heart, is somebody praying I have joy in my heart, in the name of Jesus I'm lovable, I'm acceptable I'm favored, anywhere I go, people love me they accept me, in the name of Jesus, I rise above negative thinking negative emotion, in the name of Jesus. My emotion will not drive me wrongly and roughly. In Jesus' precious name, we are praying.